Whew. And ceramic is like an addiction. もう我々の感覚としてはもう発想も全然できなかった。Yeah. <笑>挑戦、要は創作革新を続けないとそれは伝統として生き残れないんだよ In Japan, I had this feeling no, there are no obstacles. Everything is this direction, it goes up. レジデンシーの中でそういったところもきちんと落とし込んでいければなと思ってます。There is a sort of pressure there because people expect that you're going to do something and it needs to be amazing. So these are a collection of works, or a selection of the works I,、uh, I did in Arita. And、um, I would like to first start with showing the Made by Rain. Like all these plates have their own、um, imprint. So, what we did, we put it outside in the rain, and then the rain makes the patterns. Um, so, we came to a glazing concept where like,、uh, different layers of glaze and color are sprayed upon,、um, and then it's hot in the rain, and then it's brought back, and then it's fired, and then you get so this plate, and then、um, on the back is describing the time and the location. Arita is a small village where you have 100 potters. And every potter does something else. So, one potter is specialized only in white porcelain, another potter, potter is specialized in hand painting. Every single part of the process, from clay making till the creation of the tool, the mold, the milling, the casting, until the firing, glazing process, is there in one village. Arita は磁器作りっていう同じ産業で400年も続いた町です。有田の特徴は地元のその泉山透析を使って独特のこう磁器を作り出したわけですけど。No other country in the world produced higher quality porcelain than Japan around 1670。オランダの東インド会社が。あこの有田焼の素晴らしさ、えー、東インド会社がヨーロッパに行ってこんなに美しいものが東洋にはあるのかということでヨーロッパの王侯貴族が、まあまあ、まさに買いあさるっていうことが適切か分かりませんけれどもみんながもう奪い合ったようにいいっていう時があって。Japanese porcelain is part of Dutch history. We, the Dutch, the Dutch East India Company started to import Japanese porcelain from Arita very, very early on in around 1655. The technical perfection of Japanese porcelain shows very clearly in this dish. It's in Kakemon style, and Kakemon factory was one of the workshops in Arita in around 1670 that made the top quality porcelain. And you can tell from this object the glaze is very, very thin. The shape is perfect, the painting is crisp and precise, and the colors are very vibrant. And most of all, the overall design is beautifully arranged across the round dish. I really love this object, it's so perfect. The composition is almost like a flower arrangement, you know, when you have、um, earth, man, and heaven in Japanese flower arrangements, you can see the three. Branches of the composition work in exactly the same way, asymmetrically draped along the edge. It's beautiful. I think in 2012 we got a phone call from the embassy, from the Japanese embassy, if they could visit us with a delegation of Saga 
to see our workshop. And we were excited immediately because we heard that the delegation was from Arita. And of course, Arita is some kind of magic name in the world of porcelain, in the world of ceramics. Uh, we didn't know exactly what to expect or why they wanted to come to our center because the knowledge, the level of knowledge in Japan, actually in Asia, is much higher than we have in the Netherlands. Of course, we are very strong in creativity, we are strong in design, we are strong in experiment. But in the real craftsmanship, that's something that you, that you have to find in Japan. It was great to talk with real experts, but we also found out that they had some kind of problem in Arita, which is an economic problem. They lost so much turnover in a couple of years. And they wanted to discuss with us, is design the answer to bring back the turnover? Japan of Arita uh, invited us uh, to send over some Dutch uh, designers to help uh, uh, develop their um, uh, ceramics. So I think it's a Valhalla for uh, a paradise for um for artists, if you want to start working with ceramic, if you are a pro in ceramic, if you just want to... Yeah, we selected uh, artists who just made only drawings. He, never, he always made drawings on paper, but now he wanted to try drawings on porcelain. Yeah, doing a residency abroad um, really helps between, in the exchange uh, of knowledge between two countries. The Dutch designers are very good in developing in a more conceptual manner. Um, and bringing innovation and of course Arita offers I think the highest standard, one of the highest standards in the world. Designers really need these technical skills as well, uh, not only thinking in a conceptual way for example or artistic uh, ideas about uh, design, but you need technique and you need the knowledge of technique and um, for sometimes, uh, for some disciplines it's, you really need the craftsman uh, in the end to be able to, to innovate. え、because artists are open for experiment, that's what they do. They are into innovation, that's part of their uh, perspective. This is made in a number of six. It is a Hokusai wave, underglazed blue, and this is an iron oxide, also underglazed. If you put them together, then you have an, an, an illusion, an imagination of sea. My idea was to apply for that residency to work on the circle. This one is made in Arita too, yeah. It's more than a Nabeshima plate, you could say, like this old one bought in, uh, in Imari. And that's the shape how it is. Uh, you see that this, with this board is the, the Nabeshima ware. And the same as with those canvases with the two sides with tableware, it's normal that you also paint the, the, the other side, the back side. Here you see the title, Arita Ricefields plate. And then here on the front, the triangle, square and the circle, which has a story itself. I tried to, to really to fit them in that circular uh, shape uh, that they touch, they kiss the edges of the shape. And then you have the rest spaces who are filled in with different motifs. These Dutch designers and artists, they bring in a very unconventional, creative uh, way of looking at uh, art, whereas the ceramics and porcelain sector in Arita is sort of very traditional. Uh, and this collaboration, this partnership between these Dutch designers and artists and the high-skilled professionals in the ceramics and porcelain sector in Arita, it creates beautiful new products. This is a sort of classic way of um, making a sort of place where something can happen. We looked at sculpt Buddhist wooden sculptures. We wanted something to 
to have this sort of space where something can happen and we call that a, a, a place where something should crash. So you make a sort of really precise surrounding, natural surrounding for something which nearly loses shape and form. It's also, these are uh, casts of bamboo sticks. We got the idea for the sticks because of the Shinto temples. There are always these flag poles, sometimes with flags or sometimes without, and that sort of marks really nicely the area where something will happen. It's sort of fragile, it's beautiful and rough at the same time. When we knew we were going to Japan, you have a year to play with ideas and then when you are actually in Japan, you do not even know exactly which of all these ideas you will sort of use or which you can use in the end. And then in the case of Japan, there was this material porcelain, porcelain. which did not behave at like all we expected. No. as we expected. No. There's no other material in the world that has like such a transformation as ceramic. Uh, you know, you, you, it's clay with some dust on it, with some powder. You put it in the kiln and you fire it. And when you open, it's like a totally different object, like magic. That's really special. And then it has to be glazed. And so you have to adjust on this sculpture and then you glaze it and you have again this fixed idea. You put it in, take it out after a few days or a day or one and a half. You have to make a mold, you have to test a lot of things, you need to make color samples and everything has to go into the kiln. So you have to wait uh, hours and hours before you have a result. You know, the problem is also when you totally fill it with objects, with smaller objects, and when something goes wrong, everything is ruined. You know, you open, you open the kiln here and you have like a lavine of, of uh, crushed ceramic. It's terrible. With ceramic it's everything or nothing. There's no in-between. If there's a one crack, you can throw it away. That's ceramic. The English say ceramic is a bitch and it needs to be tamed. And for me, the, it, is a, it can be a bitch, you know, the ceramic. It can, you know, if you're one time, you're not fully focused, then it slaps you in the face. You always need to be focused. So it's really a love-hate relationship. Here you see uh, uh, some of the things I uh, made in Arita. This is a uh, result of the experiment I did just piling a thin prefabricated object as far as they go. Building while collapsing is the title of it. I did this earlier already in, uh, in the Netherlands when, with uh, clay, what you can see here on this. This is uh, the same concept with clay that are just making prefabricated elements and I pile them as high as I can and uh, then of course the deformation starts and they start collapsing and I go as far as I can with the collapsing and stop at the moment just where the collapsing will start so that the collapse, collapse becomes freezed in and the fascinating thing is that it looks now very fragile but actually it is stable because of that. I thought in Arita it would be a challenge for me to do exactly the same with porcelain and then you see the result here. You see immediately porcelain is a much uh, less tolerant material than clay. So uh, that means uh, it breaks much easier, you can bend it less so uh, um, that's the only one which I achieved a bit higher. This is uh, this is the zeppelin. This is really from porcelain, and uh, yeah, there, there it was also for me really on the edge to make it because the time I had to produce it. It's uh, really, really short. Uh, they were afraid that this will uh, collapse because they had the technical uh, point of critic before thinking that the inside is too stable, too solid, and the outside uh, will uh, dry faster. 
that they were really afraid that it might uh, not survive. Yeah. You prefabricated all these elements that you do several days before, but the really building process was maybe three hours. In total production time, you need two, two weeks to, to make it. But um, the moment that it really becomes like that, that's a very short moment. That's, that's the performance moment. There's no way of return. Playing with risk, that's actually a good point I still have to mention because that's always something which is crucial in my work. I really, really like to be on this edge of uh, risk. ですからその辺のところがマッチした形で話が進むと非常に双方にとってお互いにいいメリットになるのかなと思ってますただそこのところがやはり一番難しいところかなと思ってます Japanese people are very patient I'm very impatient you know but you know you're also another country and the language is also difficult then creating a difficult project becomes like even more difficult because you don't have like you have the knowledge, the knowledge is there, but the communication is much more difficult. Yeah, for me it was uh, quite a challenge there. The project is to say that the project is to be a big project. This is to be a project of the project. So this dripping, I, I cre I, this whole technique, I invented it in Narita. So I saw a sort of object that was, that arised from dripping porcelain. And then I decided to use this technique to create certain objects. Japanese people are very serious and they're very like formal, you know. And I like when, to keep it a little bit more, I like to make jokes. But Japanese people are not used to that kind of situation, so they really like, uh, they feel uncomfortable. And I like that a lot, you know. So <laughs> we really had some funny moments there, yeah. その中にですね、まあ、例えばあの我々がちょっと全然気づかないようなそういったところに着目されてですね、えー、ちょっとあの捉えどころが違うなっていうところが思いました、まあ、例えばあの東堂屋さんに行った時に、えー、東堂の伝承っていうか焼き物の土の剣濁液それが少しずつこう雫として。落ちていく、滴っていく、まあ、そういったところが非常に衝撃を受けて面白いと、まあ、そういったところを形にしたいという方もおられましたし。So、here you see one that I created in Narita. Whew!、Um, and it's、uh, created with、uh, also the dripping. And we first made a mold there. And with this mold, I created. This white object, and on this white object, I put the dripping. I really like this one. There's a lot of movement in here. I'm more a designer who, by really experimenting to create something different, I, I to be very honest, when they saw me in the beginning, I think they thought, okay, this is gonna be one big disaster what he's going to make. and in the end, it was something that they, they were really surprised what I created because they ha haven't seen something like that before. It was something really new. You start to work and, and I noticed also that the things I was doing that there were people there who were like, oof, I haven't seen this before, huh? How can you, mixing wool with porcelain to make it stronger and make it more usable as a kind of moldable material. If a potter is throwing a wheel or is making something on the wheel, there's, there's a lot of rubbish around it uh, because uh, clay or porcelain is scratched off at a certain point and it falls down really beautifully, but it's not of any use for this vase or whatever that is made. But the, 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 the messy stuff around for us is an inspiration and we can use, and we did, we did use that. Every thing what, what could go wrong we did in our sculptures. And that worked very well, <laughs> I would say. We also call our work sometimes controlled accidents. What caught my attention during working together with the craftsmen um, is like a deep concentration. Um, but also when I came in with a different view on something, it was first a little bit like, how, are go how do we manage this? But then if we came to something, it also opened new eyes on their like tradition. 
重要ですねあのやっぱりこうどちらかというと有田というともう本当十数年前までは閉鎖的特に海外の人に対してはほとんどやっぱ閉鎖的な町で,町でしたのでみんななんかねあやっぱりこう根底は一緒なんだなって感じがしますよねみんな笑顔でやっぱ楽しくやるということでですね。You are just shocked about everything that is different. Shocked in a good way. And I like to be shocked. And I think in Japan, it's 24 hours shock. That's why I, I love to be there because everything is so different. You have, to be, you have to be aware and awake all the time and then you know, start the dialogue. What is this doing with me? So it, it asks a lot of courage.、Um, you know, to, to, To open yourself. So, this is the masu, and at this very moment it should be full of rice. But,、uh, so, this is the measurement of one portion of rice that the samurai would give to his people、uh, for one day. So, the masu is a wooden box, and I took this form、uh, as an as a object. To make it again in porcelain, mixing rice. So you can also see this means masu in Japanese. I made 365. Not all of them have rice, some、uh, are without rice, just to make a composition、uh, which is alive.、Um, here I don't have 365. But the idea was when people would come to the exhibition in Arita,、um, I made a call that people would bring their old masus、uh, so we could exchange. So that was as well nice, some moments of, of、uh, exchanging thoughts about、uh, the objects, about culture, about the rice, about the fragility of things.、Um, And those were, yeah, I think the true moments of meeting culture. We are here in the permanent exhibition of the museum. The museum is about the connection between the East and the West.、Uh, we are here in between the origins of porcelain in China. And the inspiration it had on Europe. We are here in the room focused on Japan and Korea, and we are very proud uh, to uh, be on this, have on display not only famous plates from Arita, from Kakiemon, and others, but also two very、uh, unique 17th century figurines called Beijing from、uh, Kakiemon in the late 17th century. Uh, we believe that、uh, one essential part of exchange between cultures is inspiration.、Uh, just like、uh, Japanese and Chinese porcelain inspired、uh, ceramic makers from the Netherlands in Delft but also in Friesland, we think it is still happening today and we would really like to have an active role in that.、Uh, so we greatly support the residency. Of、uh, Dutch, but also other uh, ma uh, makers, designers、uh, in Arita, and we also support it by acquiring it for the museum collection. Arita has its own special techniques, and the nice thing about this working period is that we first had a week where we just were introduced to all these different techniques, so this also gives already new ideas. Or perspective to, to, to see how traditionally is worked in Rito with porcelain, with underpaint, with glaze. Yeah, I think seeing all the techniques together was like, yeah, that's like the candy shop story, you know. So it's, it's hard then to pick also because you see so many beautiful angles to, to start a project. It's、uh, in their DNA that they embrace this craft. So everyone in Japan is. Uh, is embracing craft. It was, of course, a bit uh, daunting uh, to see these people have been studying this art for decades now, 
of course the Japanese way is to start from the bottom and learning your craft in the most serious and uh, you know disciplined way imaginable and just me coming in as a simple Dutch guy and not knowing anything about anything. Here in Western Europe you don't have this sharp focused mentality of working that I didn't found that here. People listening to the radio, they're making jokes, they have coffee uh, beside. Um, they're not so 100% focused. And there you go to a factory and all people are like that. What I found interesting to try and see if I can, could pull it off was actually I'm not sure if you can see it, but to make like fake uh, sticky tape to actually show that it was a collage, as, as if you would do on paper, of course, but then to see if you could do it with just varnish, with um, glaze. When I came to Ganymon, all my, all my designs were actually made on a computer, they were digital. Uh, so it was also quite magical to see someone being, you know, doing it by hand, being able to translate it in, like in one go on, on a por porcelain surface. That was beautiful to me. So one of the small experiments I undertook while doing Tensha was uh, trying to mimic the effect of sticky tape to actually really bring home the idea of a collage. Um, so that's what I, yeah, I spent weeks on trying to actually mimic plastic sticky tape as, as well as possible, just with simple existing glazes. From the people who silk screened uh, like sticker sheets for me, they call Tencha, which are like mm, silk screened sheets uh, that uh, you can actually cut out and uh, like water slide decals, you can slide them onto porcelain surfaces and then they get uh, fired. So they get stuck to the surface of the porcelain. Uh, but I used them yeah, in, a, in a collage type way. Uh, I made uh, I think about 30 pieces in this way, just freely cutting up bits and pieces from existing large sheets of, of um, designs. Um, yeah, and this, this design I think refers to the Katami Gawari pieces in uh, traditional Arita wear, where they have like these really uh, disjointed and uh, cut off compositions. I, I wanted to refer to just really normal and completely uh, yeah, simple village life type uh, scenes. So this, I fell in love with roadblocks, which you see around in the village a lot in Arita. But to me, they were really aesthetically pleasing and beautiful because of these clashing patterns like striped and um, lovely fluorescent colors. And um, yeah, so a lot of the designs that I made myself were actually referring to that, like really common things, things you find in the supermarket, road signs, traffic signs, stuff like that. Yeah, so from a Western point of view, uh, we, are, we tend to make symmetrical pat patterns or at least do symmetrical designs. But in Japan, of course, it's uh, more interesting and they find it more interesting to have uh, asymmetry, things in threes instead of twos, like odd numbers instead of even numbers. So this design refers to this traditional uh, type of composition. A lot of my time in Arita was actually like that, so I think it was a realistic self-portrait in a way as well, like all these different elements you find along the way, they just get scattered uh, on the surface of this porcelain, and that's exactly what I felt uh, most of the time. Yeah, I think Japan was really, it was the first time for me to be in Japan, um, to go to Arita. And people were, before saying people were quite, quite close, that was a bit what, be, what somehow people told me this. But then when I got there, the reality was really different. I just got really enthusiastic about making it. What was also really interesting for me was because I had always been a lot of, uh, I've always done a lot of collaborations also. And here I was really alone. These are the, the moon plates. So I used uh, plates which are made in Arita and that had something wrong with them. So they would either be thrown away or they would, or they had some, um, uh, uh, some damage on them. Um, so I used old plates from Arita 
And then with the moons, which also come from Arita Baten, some centuries before, which the Koreans were painting. I found one of these ones with, with the moon. Um, so it's, also, it's quite an old one. Um, and so here you can see one of these moons. Uh, but this is from a bit later, but this is kind of the idea that I would take um, only the moon and the rest of the plate is gone. This is for instance the test print, which we did, which I actually really like as a work on itself. The, the idea with these ones is that they have the, the moons are in the spot where the original moon drawing would also be. And then I left out all of the painting. The approach is just so different in, I think, in the Netherlands and, and also how I work is a bit more, um, um, well, rough, I would say, just sort of, with, mm, just, to, and then there it's, it was really interesting how to see how delicate people can work and really put so much effort. Ceramics can teach us a lot. It can teach us to be careful with objects because of course it's still breakable. Uh, but it also gives us the sense of durability that you can use it for a whole generation. It's even possible to give it to the next generation. And you also give the memories to the next generation. And that's also something that Arita can, can offer. Um, my son went to study. He started his uh, is a study uh, last year. I gave him two little cups of uh, uh, the pottery, the house of Kakimo. And these two little cups, he uses every day to drink his coffee. Uh, he knows that they're very valuable. He knows that this is my present to him at the moment he became 18 years old. So, and it will be something that will, he, he will not only use it his whole study, but hopefully his whole life. Japan can be quite a a conservative country sometimes, but at the same time, they quickly develop something and make it absolutely technically perfect. I really hope that we'll continue the collaboration between these two countries. I think the results are very impressive and I hope we can continue it. Arita is synonym for quality. I think there's no other place in the world where they can have such a tradition of quality and they move slowly into the 21st century. But the whole concept of slow ceramics is extremely important in the fast world of today. So they give us also meaning to porcelain. This vase was made in the in the same mold. You can you can now see you can see the, the shape a bit better here. They'd cut this off, so that would be the vase, um, the neck of the of the the opening of the vase. I left that on, which they of course would never do, um, and um, I really enjoyed uh, walking in Arita on my own in the mountains. Um, incredibly visual, so different than woods here. Um, lots of dead wood and the, and the silhouettes of the dead wood. Um, so I, I was making this um, uh, with that in mind. Um, and because it's a vase, it has to hold flowers some way. So I made a little pocket here uh, and imprinted this uh, porcelain, um, used the granite rocks in the, in the garden of the creative residency. Uh, which is also, you know, you're working there and you can just, you think, oh, there's a texture, let's go and get that. So then I added in the clearing of the wood uh, a little, little pocket that you can put flowers into, a little posy. It always was mixed medium, but maybe Arita gave me time to focus on porcelain techniques. So I could make something I wouldn't do myself here in the studio. Porcelain is more like a painting material because you can mix with different colors and it creates different patterns, flows as a, like water. 
So it's a lot about um, performativity of the material, which I focused on. It's a technique with a glaze and oxides and applied on top of a stoneware. So I build this by hand and then I fire it and glaze afterwards, fire again. As well, I cannot control the pattern, just a little bit an idea what color it will come together as a reaction. But there's lots of reactions happens, which is interesting to see afterwards. So I will continue this direction right now working. I will make more bigger shapes and I will see what happens. Because now maybe I understand when it becomes a bit more blue and when it's a bit more brown. A little bit I can control, but you know it runs down as well, so what happens I can... When we touch each other, each different oxides, they also become something like right here some green appears or here. It's very hard to control. The residency program allows you to see, I think, now maybe 10 or more uh, potteries to, to go into their workshop and uh, to hear their story, to see uh, the master craftsmen or to see the, the co-workers of them uh, working on something, you know. That, that was super inspiring because I think what was so inspiring to me is that they did one thing and they did it very, very well. Like they mastered it and uh, this had such a high focus on something and that's something that I didn't really see so far in, uh, in Holland or Europe. Uh, this is actually one example out of many. Um, so here we did a lot of color research, uh, texture research, um, surface re research in general so to say. So it started with looking into all the colors. Uh, and then how to apply these different kind of colors uh, in a certain way that fits the product. So I want to come up with a kind of logic that says, okay, this glaze should either be on the, the small plate or the medium container or the large container. And then the idea was that as a consumer, you can you go to a store and you see this Jubacco and you say, okay, I like this color and that color. You kind of conduct your own Jubacco. Yeah, well, for example, Timon Smulders, he uh, went to Arita a couple of years ago. Uh, he went there for three months, but afterwards uh, he took all his knowledge back home in the Netherlands and then produced uh, a line of uh, ceramics for tableware. And it's been very successful. Um, but also a lot of people who went there, the designers who presented their work, for example, in the Netherlands, but also like, uh, for example, in Milan, in Italy, during the International Design Week. So then it attracts a lot of attention from actually around the world. So in the end, the results are being uh, seen by people um, globally. You could make an endless uh, uh, stack, of course. But I like to think about it as a small plate or then the lid, like a dual function. And then a medium container. Um, and then a bigger one. And then there are actually two variations. So this is the smaller one, which we like to call the Japanese uh, version. And there's also the big one. Uh, this. You can imagine if you start stacking this container, you get a much bigger volume. So then you can also really do something different with it than traditionally only putting food, storing food inside. Um, Taking this back home to uh, taking this back home this also means that we can maybe see uh, different places to use it. So it can be on your desk, maybe or it can be inside of a cabinet, yeah, containing all these different functions. If I think about the most important parts of the experience, it's not the ceramic for me. I think I have a I'm still using inspiration from uh, Arita. 
You know, when I came back from Arita, I really decided to, to put my whole extruding process in a totally new direction. And that was really a compliment to hear after I left. Like, I learned so much from you just observing you because I had it the same with him. So that's, I think it's so nice that without any communication, like direct communication, we learned so much from each other. ですからあのまあ我々もまあそういったちょっと違う角度で角度からのまあいろんなものの見方っていうことをすることによってもっと新しい焼き物のアイデアデザインそういったところが見出せるのかなっていうことで非常に勉強になったところでした。It's hard to describe how important the residency of Arita is for artists and designers from Europe. I'm not sure that Arita realizes. That they bring a lot of uh, inspiration to these artists who tell everyone in the world where they go to about Arita. So instead of only works of art, they also create high profile amb ambassadors, cultural ambassadors, who tell in England, in Germany, in the Netherlands about the strength and the quality of Arita. I, I talked so many times about Arita in the Netherlands. <clears throat> and it is an experience that will be with me all my life. Incredibly important for your work as an artist. For me, absolutely, most inspiring situation. And I wish uh, there would be more moments <laughs> to, uh, to be able to do that. I had never been to Japan before and then and it was just kind of, I was wanting to do this project with, with ceramics and then this residency came up online and that's and coincidentally it was Japan and now and I always was a bit annoyed with these people who were really into Japan and then I became one of those. I think I took home a lot of experience. Now when I make a design I'm more busy than before seeing how it can be produced. So my notion of functionality changed and I think it became more functional in the end my idea. Yeah. In Japan I had this feeling you can have uh, this kind of upgrade, it, it pushed me up really, really a lot on several levels. We as the Western Europeans can learn from them really a lot. The whole thing was unique. Um, and uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's strange, I'm not a very sentimental or, or whatever person, but um, uh, like the day before I went, I thought, I'm going to be crying when I go. <laughs> I'm crying now. And um, uh, it, it, it just touches you. It's, um, yeah, it's something really unique. <laughs>